Chelsea have drawn a game with Arsenal that ended 1-1, which sees them move up into third above Arsenal. But while a lot of the talk will be around the red side of London, today we're going to be taking a look at what Chelsea did so well against the Gunners and why it could be a positive indication of performances to come. A lot of the talk following this game will be around Arsenal, what they did or did not do, what they score or did not score, and to an extent you can understand that, being the side that is looking to go and take that Premier League title away from Manchester City. But I actually think that Chelsea deserve a whole heap of credit in this game, and I don't see too many people doing it. So what I want to talk about is the way that Chelsea were able to really go at Arsenal and really cause them quite a few problems, in particular in possession, through the centre of the pitch. Chelsea actually managed to maintain a good heap of possession against Arsenal. We need to remember this is an Arsenal side that is one of the best defensive sides in the league. They had one of the best defences in the league last year and they caused Manchester City a whole heap of problems when it came to defending, when it came to being able to break down the lines and this is something that I thought Chelsea did really well. They had some really good moments in the match and it was down to a couple of rotational based things in their setup. So we know that Palmer moves over to the left hand side and this is because Gusto moves over into that right sided 10 position. The inversion of the fullback is nothing new at this point but it's what changes Enzo Maresca made that I thought made all the difference. Fofana comes across, so does Cowell and so does Kukurea creating that back three. You obviously had the midfield double pivot of Caicedo and Lavia giving them that good defensive solidity but remember this Arsenal 442 is nothing to be messed with they are extremely potent they are very dominant and it takes a lot to be able to break them down so what did they do so well Gusto and Palmer in their right and left 10 attacking positions respectively did a couple of different things in pushing Neto and Madueke really wide and I mean almost hugging the touchline it meant that there was extra space for Madueke and Neto to be able to get on the ball but also at the same time it gave Palmer and Gusto a lot more space and what they did was they just spread across linking up with their fellow wingers a little bit more and what this naturally did was it pulled Partey and Rice across a little bit so it ended what ended up happening was that you had Partey move across here Rice move across here and then all of a sudden a big space in the center of the park starts to open up Enzo Maresca likes to have a 4v4. He likes to overload the midfield and make sure that they have that midfield dominance. Arsenal do this as well, but they do it defensively with Odegaard and Havertz moving infield and then helping out Rice and Partey and creating that four. This is very similar to Chelsea's four when they have possession in Gusto, Palmer, Lavi and Caicedo, but in just splitting Gusto and Palmer in the centre of the pitch and moving them across to either channel, what you've actually got is a whole heap of space for someone to walk into, and that player is Nicholas Jackson. He does a really good job of just drifting into the space and then you've got passes from Colwell into Jackson. You've got passes from Colwell into Palmer and then it allows Chelsea to start going, turning this Arsenal defence. Now although it didn't amount to all too much, I was extremely impressed by the movement of Chelsea that was able to open up this Arsenal defence. Saliba managed to really get aggressive onto Jackson on occasion and occasionally he was able to move forwards but it's just one pass away from Neto being able to spring in, from Palmer being able to spring in, the same can be said for Madueke down this side and it's the building blocks for a really good side in Chelsea, a really good performance, a couple more months or even three or four months once they start to get these intricate passes down once they start to get the movements down and it becomes second nature you know, I can see Chelsea really starting to carve teams open and this is something that I don't see too many people talking about their building blocks for breaking down a defense like Arsenal's are really starting to come to the forefront and it's super super impressive let me try and show you what I'm talking about in the game. So, we've got Levi Cobble who's currently got the ball right here. And notice the split between Gusto and Palmer. Look at how wide they are. And naturally, they're just dragging away the likes of Thomas Partey and Declan Rice. Again, look at the split between them. You've got Gabriel and you've got Saliba both talking to each other. You can't see that at the moment, but they're just here. They're just here and they're both concerned about Nicholas Jackson. Now, both of them can't be marking him because of the off-the-ball runs from the Chelsea players. You've got Lavia and you've got Caicedo, so you've got your defensive midfield pivot. And this is what was causing Arsenal so many problems on occasion. Again, it won't get talked about because they didn't score from it, but I think it's really, really good. So you, This is the pass that's continuously in 
to Jackson. You've got Colwell being able to pass into him over and over again. Jackson just moves into the space and look at the space that's left for him. It's really good. Now, a better player and a better time other than Jackson, I think, could really make this work. He takes a poor touch after he receives it from Colwell, but look at that pass. Fired into him. And yes, you could say that Arsenal react really well, and that is the case. But later down the line, once it starts to become second nature, once the movements start to become a little bit more natural, you can see the pass being flipped around the corner here. You can see the pass being flipped around the corner here for Palmer to make that movement. It's starting to take fruition, and it's really, really impressive. I think it's really good. This is another moment. So you've got Lavia, you've got Caicedo, you've got Palmer who can make a run in beyond, you've got Jackson. And again, look at the split between Thomas Partey and Declan Rice. It's acres. It's so wide and it's so well done by Chelsea to be able to open that up. Again, you've got another chance. Palmer is just going to drift into this space. And because they've shuffled Arsenal across a little bit, look at where Thomas Partey is. He tried to jump onto Lavia, who is being taken by Odegaard. But the space that's being left here is again isolated by Cole Palmer. And Levi Colwell is just going to fire that into him. Let's go back one touch again. He's going to fire this pass from Colwell into Cole Palmer, into this space, into this area. So well done again. And this is a moment that, while it doesn't come to anything, it can really start to break the lines. And all of a sudden, you've got Arsenal chasing back towards their own goal in a situation they don't want to be in. Pace from Jackson. You've got off-the-ball runs from Neto. Once they start to get a bit more of a second nature for this, it's going to be really, really dangerous. Again, we can see here, Gusto, Palmer, look at the split, and then look at the split between Declan Rice, who's here, and you've got Thomas Partey. It's really wide. Yes, Odegaard and Havertz are in fine position, but it's the split from the two Chelsea 10s that's causing Arsenal this problem. And I just think they did such, such a good job, and it's not being talked about enough for me. Again, you've got one here, you've got two here. The split is quite wide, and it's all about making one singular movement. Once this happens, once... I think it's going to be really dangerous and really difficult to deal with. It's good stuff from Chelsea, even though it doesn't amount to a goal or a major, major opportunity, but it's something for you guys to watch out for later down the line. But against an opposition with the level of Arsenal, you're going to be punished if you don't switch on for the entire 90 minutes. And that's what happened here for Arsenal's goal against Chelsea. Martin Odegaard out on this right-hand side with the ball. He just clips it over towards the back post and the Chelsea line is not in line. They're not holding their line together. And it just so happens that I think it was Colwell who just dropped back a little bit too deep. Martinelli and Declan Rice out on this back post. Malagusto has no awareness here whatsoever. And that's how the goal starts to break down. You've got a pass through from Odegaard over the top towards Martinelli, who takes a really good touch, I might add. It's really, really well done here. Takes a really well, good touch down. And then it's about whether he can stop that ball and then take a shot. He actually shoots towards the front post and it was super, super good. I'd say Sanchez should do a little bit better, but it's really good work from Arsenal. And again, like I said, if you switch off for a moment to get to the side of this quality, you're going to get punished. Really, really good stuff from them. And before we end, let's take a look at that Chelsea goal to equalise against Arsenal. We have a number of different things happening here, so we're going to try and break it down. One thing I really want to mention to begin with is the idea of taking space. And Enzo Mrazka is trying to get this into his Chelsea side continuously. It's about taking the space that's been afforded to you. And look at the space here. This has happened because it's come on from a corner. And just look at this here. If we just take a look at this, Thomas Partey and Declan Rice are both marking Wesley Fofana. And it's because Fofana and Colwell have both stayed up post the corner once the ball gets recycled. It just so happens that Enzo Fernandez has the ball and he's going to play it into Pedro Neto. But look, Declan Rice should be here and Thomas Partey should be here and they should be really aggressive towards Neto in this instance. Instead, they don't and they sit back and just wait for the ball to come to them. This is where I think Arsenal should do a lot better here and it's the space that's been exploited by Chelsea that's really caused this problem. Yes, it's a fantastic shot from Neto, but he should never be allowed this space. He should never be given this amount of opportunity to be able to go and take a shot. And I'm sure they realise this, and I know they need to go close them down, but it's nowhere near good enough, and they need to be trying to make a little bit more of this moment, a little bit more of this opportunity. Just so happens they don't, and it ends up being smashed into the net by Pedro Neto. It's a fantastic goal, one that is just phenomenal, and brings Chelsea back into the game. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. 
While the game didn't result in a win and the moments didn't result in goals, the building blocks of play for Chelsea are definitely there, and it's the fact that they were able to do it against the side which many have tipped to win the Premier League that's so very encouraging to fans. And with a bit more time, with a bit more work on the training pitch, it's the promise of things to come that I think should be so very exciting for Chelsea fans going forwards. But of course, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. What did you make of Chelsea? What did you make of Arsenal? Let me know. I would love to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new, and I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.